Tesla is in the midst of developing a new $25,000 electric car, which aims to be half the cost of the previous generation vehicles, including the Model 3 and Model Y. Elon Musk revealed his plans to produce tens of millions of these cars earlier this year, starting with a revolutionary new method that highly parallelizes the manufacturing process. Tesla calls this the unboxed process, which involves developing large sub-assemblies, giving them the advantage of allowing multiple workers and robots to focus on these relatively smaller parts at the same time, and then finally to combine the modular parts together to complete the vehicle. This marks an innovative departure from the traditional assembly line, which by definition follows a linear path and hasn't seen significant changes in literally over a hundred years since it was popularized by Henry Ford. However, a recent report from Reuters reveals Tesla's under the radar pursuit of a groundbreaking next gen technology, a Gigacasting 2.0, which is something slightly different from what they initially showcased to the public back in March of this year. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years, and it's all freely available. Tesla has been making use of large gigacastings for the front and rear underbody of its Model 3 and Y vehicles for some time. They use custom-designed gigapresses ranging from 6,000 to 9,000 tons of force, that are built by the company Idra and contain some extra requirements from Tesla. Now the 9,000 ton Gigapress is one of the largest we know of that's been acquired by Tesla and is set to be aimed at casting parts for the Cybertruck. Because this is a completely different type of vehicle that employs an exoskeleton design which places the structural elements on the exterior of the vehicle as opposed to the internal chassis of a car, Tesla's had to completely rethink the design process for this novel pickup truck. This, in turn, has provided Tesla with valuable insights that they could potentially reapply back into their existing chassis-based vehicles like the Model 3 and Model Y. However, Tesla's approach is instead to leverage the learnings from the Cybertruck and create an entirely new, more efficient platform for the development of the upcoming $25,000 vehicle using the unboxed process inspired by the innovations introduced with a Cybertruck. Tesla's plan is to use this ultra-large casting machine to form the entire underbody of their smaller $25,000 vehicle in one single piece. This appears to be possible in part because the Cybertruck castings are so large given the size of this vehicle and so a casting of the entire underbody of a smaller, compact car could employ similar techniques that Tesla needed to adapt for the Cybertruck. And Tesla does have a patent for a giant multi-directional casting machine that's said to do the entire vehicle at once, demonstrating their desire to put more and more parts into a single casting. But just the underbody of a smaller car would likely be able to make use of a traditional unidirectional style gigapress given that it works for the much larger Cybertruck. According to Reuters, this would allow the next generation vehicle to combine up to 400 parts into a single casting. Now while this may be viewed as a rumor, it's interesting to consider that Reuters has been quite accurate with its predictions thus far. They broke the news about the Model 3 Highland about 10 months before it was officially unveiled. Now they say they have five sources confirming Gigacasting 2.0, although Tesla can easily change their minds or the design process in the future if required. Now this could be massive for Tesla and would push them to further disrupt the traditional automakers, especially since their current Gigacastings have automakers who haven't at all innovated in decades scrambling to catch up. Tesla's tremendous cost savings and additional speed due to the Gigapress's single part efficiency, eliminating swaths of factory robots, has made their electric vehicles highly competitive in the market while everyone else struggles just to break even. However, this new Gigacasting 2.0 deviates or even conflicts with the innovative unboxed process that Tesla introduced to the public at Investor Day in March. 
The unboxed process showcased that the front and rear castings for the next generation vehicle were located in separate modules or separate stations being worked on independently while building this vehicle. The entire purpose is to increase operator density by decreasing the so-called surface area of each major part so that workers can gain better access and work on each individual part faster than if they were all merged together early in the assembly process. And so it's unclear how Tesla would do this if a single ultra-large casting merging the front, rear, and battery sections together forces the process to revert back to being more sparse for operators, which would completely change how the vehicle is built. What's more is that the center of this large casting would be the structural battery pack. While putting it into a single casting would add structure and support, it may make it much more difficult to get workers and robots access to the battery pack, which is a complex part on its own, and would further complicate things by forcing them to work around the attached front and rear underbodies, which are still extremely large and heavy pieces. It seems like Tesla was trying to avoid this by separating them so that they can be worked on in parallel, but the innovations in gigacasting technology seem to be compelling them to try and bring the pieces and therefore the processes back together. According to Reuters, what Tesla showcased in March remains speculative, and the company may be flexible with their plans given the new technology or may not have even showed what they were truly working on. It's worth noting that the presentation featured a Model Y, not the actual next generation vehicle that they're developing. Sources suggest that Tesla might decide on the die casting method for the platform within the coming month. However, even if they proceed with this approach, the final product could undergo changes during the design validation phase. And this is also where another die casting breakthrough that Tesla has been working on comes into play. Making a large metal mold can cost up to $1.5 million. Typically, multiple iterations and tweaks are required at great expense during the prototyping and testing phase. The entire design process for a single large mold may be in the $4 million range. This gets prohibitively expensive, especially with larger and larger molds, as Tesla intends to achieve, and it's also why other automakers have steered away from using this expensive method, even if it does ultimately provide a higher efficiency part. However, Elon Musk has pushed the company in this direction despite the major risks. To achieve transformative cost reductions, and this in turn has facilitated the development of new innovative processes. Tesla has been working with design and casting specialists in the US, Japan, Germany, and Britain who have turned to 3D printing with industrial sand. 3D printers are used to layer sand and apply a binding agent in each pass, giving the sand some structure and allowing it to form the mold's shape. This is something that's new for such giant molds and it comes with significant benefits. 3D printers can rapidly build the molds at just 3% of the cost of using an equivalent metal alloy. They can also create intricate parts by incorporating hollow elements using sand cores, wherein they can later remove sections of the sand that have been added during the casting process, and all of the sand can be completely recycled and reused once again. While traditional metal molds are still used for the actual production process, this sand casting process needs a different type of alloy. But Tesla can use this method to experiment with producing lighter subframes with hollow sections that enhance crash worthiness. The sand cores are also instrumental in rapid prototyping, reducing both mold design costs and the timeline from 6 to 12 months down to just 2 to 3 months. This isn't without its major challenges, however. With the new $25,000 compact car that Tesla intends to make, casting the entire underbody could require a new, much larger type of gigapress, one with clamping strength of potentially over 16,000 tons. This is uncharted territory, although Tesla does have continued experience from using progressively larger gigapresses most recently 9,000 tons for the Cybertruck. However, with a 16,000 ton press, such high pressure and clamping power may prevent the use of sand cores 
for the hollow subframes. Alternatively, Tesla has the option to shift to a slower injection method that accommodates sand cores, promising higher quality results. However, as the name suggests, the slow injection process could significantly extend the production timeline. Ideally, Tesla seeks a solution that combines the speed and productivity gains of a high-pressure gigapress with the quality and versatility offered by sand cores in the slow injection process. Currently, achieving both simultaneously is a challenge, and Tesla is in the process of deciding between these two methods. Nevertheless, potential future breakthroughs, especially in the development of new alloys, might pave the way for a hybrid approach that blends the strengths of both techniques. So the adoption of an ultra-large gigacasting method introduces several challenges, but it holds the potential to revolutionize the vehicle manufacturing process. With this innovative design approach, Tesla could create a car from scratch in as little as 18 to 24 months, a significant improvement over the three to four years typically required by competitors. Moreover, Tesla could achieve a smaller factory footprint and expedite the car production process contingent on the chosen methodology. Additionally, the shift towards a single, albeit more expensive machine, as opposed to multiple presses combined with robotic welding, would result in reduced capital expenditure and greater output efficiency per unit cost. However, key engineering decisions remain undecided, such as whether to opt for a single large casting or continue with smaller modular components, and whether to employ higher pressure or slow injection methods involving sand cores. These critical choices will be made in the coming months as Tesla prepares for the production of its $25,000 car starting at Giga Texas. So which casting method do you think Tesla should go with and why? And will this new large Giga casting interfere with Tesla's revolutionary unboxed process? Or do you think there's a middle ground that they can choose to go with? Don't forget to watch my last video on Volkswagen's intricate electric vehicle strategy. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.